All Look right. Hello, you. hello. Good evening, good afternoon, everybody, depending on where you are in this glorious country of ours. My name is Stacey Reynolds. I'm the founder and CEO of Lays on Cray Threads, and I'm joined this evening with Rio Calvert. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi, everyone. So excited to be here. It's fun. This is going to be a fun time and a great opportunity to really talk about the small but mighty mono and screw threads that often get so overlooked out there in the threading world. I know the big lifting threads are the sexy threads that everybody mm -hmm. likes to see on Instagram, but really the heavy lifters here yeah. that do a lot of the, the crepey skin and, and address so many different issues that we have when it comes to aging can be used with the mono and screw threads. But before we get too far off into the details <laughs> here, I want Rio to introduce herself for a minute and tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, where do I begin? Let's see. I was born in, no. Um, I have been in the aesthetic industry since, gosh, 2011. And I have been doing threads. I think it's almost been eight years now, Stacey. It's, mm -hmm. been, it's been a while. And back when I started, it was the wild, wild west. Nobody knew what we were doing. So it's been a long journey and we've learned a lot and they've come such a long way. And it's still my absolute favorite aesthetic procedure to do. Um, basically, that's me in a nutshell. I, I live in Southern California, Orange County. Um, and this is my passion, threads. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we happen to have a particular high level of passion for threads as well. So let's jump right in, Rio. Today, I want to talk about how and where to use the mono and screw threads to address okay. crepey skin. So we've pre-recorded some videos that we'll walk through, but I want to first address just your tray setup and the, the process that you kind of have learned for tips and tricks that make things easier while you're inserting multiple mono and screw threads? Um, okay, so threads, where can they be used? First off, they can be used anywhere on the body. I, there's nothing off limits. As far as my tray setup, I really like to get everything set up ahead of time and that will make things go um, a lot smoother. So antiseptic, I actually take the caps, um, I kind of, uh, loosen the caps a little bit on my mono thread so that they're easier to take out and insert into the tissue. Um, now I actually have an MA who actually helps me out and she'll hold them all and they're already um, pre-loosened so that they're just easy for me to grab. Um, but just having everything, you know, ahead of time, your antiseptic, your gauze, uh, tape to get hair out of the way. Um, you know, with the monos, we don't really get a whole lot of bleeding. So, you know, we don't really need, you know, band-aids or anything like that. I like some Arnica on my tray. Um, that's pretty much, pretty much it. Just getting everything set up ahead of time will make it a lot easier. But the, the, I think the big ticket is just getting them uncapped a little bit. And I have them all organized on my tray in the order I want to use them as well. So I'll even divide them from left side to right side. Um, a white marker or even a dry erase marker um, works really, really well. I like it better than the surgical markers. The surgical markers are just so hard to wipe off. So a waxy white pencil or a dry erase marker works really well when you want to start to, when you draw in the draw out your vectors, basically. So when you are deciding which ones you're going to use first or how you tray your, you know, you line your tray up, what is the thought process of what do you decide to put in first or second? Um, it's not so much the order, it's really what I want to use. And I will obviously we'll assess. So say we're gonna do um we're gonna do these little ferrets that we get right here, these little wrinkly lines. You know, I'm gonna look at the length of what I'm dealing with. How much room do I have to deal with? And I really want to create a flat surface for myself. So if someone has a little bit of a longer face and I can create a flat surface, I'll use my longer threads. And they'll either be the PDO, PCL, or PLLAs. Um, but if they just have a short area to work with or it's lumpy or if I'm trying to go over curves, then I'm gonna pick my shorter threads. Um, and I'll typically decide am I, whether I'm going to hashtag or if I'm going to do a starburst, if I'm just want to tighten up the, the jawline. So it's really upon assessment, when I assess the patient, what is their need, where is their laxity, and what, what am I working with as far as the landscape? You know, is it going to be easy to follow that trajectory with a long 70 millimeter thread mm -hmm. um, to just really traverse that entire area and try to get over some of the lumps and bumps, or maybe having four or five of the shorter ones might work better. 
If they're very, very lax, I might choose a PCL. I might use a combination of PCL and PLLA and PDO. So again, it just depends on what is the, what's the goal. And when do you determine, and you, you have this conversation with your patients about their goals, mm -hmm. what's your go-to thread? Is it PDO? Is it PLLA? Is it PCL? What, do you have a, a real specific purpose? Yeah, my, my go-to is typically my PDO. My PDO thread, very strong, very reliable, very versatile. Um, I can get them in basically any, any size, twisted, non-twisted. Um, and that will be my go-to. And then I like to maybe intertwine some PLLAs if they have very loose, lax skin, maybe they've lost a lot of volume. You know, we're not really restoring volume per se like you would with a filler, but PLLA is basically what Sculpture is, the same chemical composition. And that was used for, for a long time now to help where patients have lost fat mm -hmm. and kind of restore that, that appearance when they've lost that volume. And then the PCLs really have the longest collagen production, the, the, the highest production of collagen one and three, and they last the longest. So for someone who just wants to just do it all right now, they don't want to have to come in very frequently, then I'll go ahead and I'll throw some PCLs in there. They are a little bit um, more expensive, so I accommodate for that. And um, so I, I, I like the combination, but my go-tos are pretty much the PDOs. All right, good deal. Well, let's jump right in and watch this particular video we have coming up for you guys. Is it it's not too long, it's short and sweet, and um, we'll, we'll learn some more. Oh no. <laughs> okay, so this is a basic setup of your tray. We wanna have a clean environment. It doesn't have to be sterile, but we want it as clean as possible. We wanna have some kind of an antiseptic, whatever it is that you use in your practice. This is Hibiclans and some alcohol, some non-woven gauze. I have a tight depressor here to apply the topical numbing. This is a 1ml syringe with a 32 gauge needle on it. This has straight Lido with Epi, and that's gonna be used to make my entry point with my introducer. I have an 18 gauge needle here, which will make my port white eyeliner, or you can use uh, markers to create the lines and the vectors that you're going to use to insert the threads. And then I have the threads I'm gonna use for the procedure. A tip here is to go ahead and pre-release this cap so that they're easier to grab and insert into the tissue once you're ready to begin. So I go ahead and I release all these prior to the treatment. Okay, so we have applied topical numbing to our patient here. We're gonna go ahead and leave the numbing on her decollete because we're gonna save that for last. We can basically place these smooth threads in a hashtag or in a sundial pattern and really help to in, uh, produce more collagen to strengthen that skin. So this is also a good technique to use prior to using the barbed lifting threads. If I can prepare the skin and help it thicken up and uh, get more collagen and last, and when I do my barbed threads, she'll get a much better outcome. You combine that with your technology-based procedures, she'll have much longer lasting effects. So you can do the hashtag to support the marionettes, hashtag to support the nasolabial folds. You can do a sundial pattern all along the jawline to help tighten up the whole jawline. You can help to enhance the cheek as well by just placing that sundial pattern or even a hashtag pattern to help support all of the tissue in her upper cheek as well to build up that volume. If you wanna support the submentum, again, you can do the hashtag pattern down here as well. So basically anywhere that you can put smooth threads, you can put them in any pattern to help produce that collagen and support that tissue, thicken it, firm it up, produce that elastin, and it'll last them for anywhere from a year to a year and a half, two years, depending on how quickly they're um, aging. So we're offering support to her lower face. She's starting to get a little bit crepey skin. And we're just creating some support with some 29 gauge, 38 millimeter threads. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use the hashtag pattern to help provide that additional support for her. And she'll start to notice the improvement over six weeks to three months. And the lasting effects can last up to a year. It is something that you wanna do 
frequently. It's not just a one and done because we are continuing to age and we want to stay ahead of the aging curve and continue to build collagen as we're losing it. So this is a great way to support this area. And we're going to stay superficial. We want to stay subdermal. And if you're in the right plane, it should go in fairly easy and should be fairly comfortable for the patient. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now, make sure all these are inserted. I'm going to press, give it a little twist and remove them. I'm going to press, give it a little twist and remove. And there you go. We can expect a little bit of bruising. Our face is very vascular, but over time, this whole area is going to start to get thicker and thicker and then she'll come and reassess again in a couple of months. Is it as painful for you watching yourself on TV as it is for me? That's horrible. How dare you do that to me? <laughs> You're I dead to me. Cringing. <laughs> so, but anyway, yes. <laughs> Rio, you make it look so easy. And I, and I don't mean to say that as a non-injector to yeah. sound naive, but basically if you can inject filler and Botox, yeah. you can insert mono threads and screw threads, correct? Is that a Absolutely. fair statement? Absolutely. I, I really recommend that people get their hands on doing uh, the smooth thread procedures first, because it'll really help build up their confidence. It is so easy. And if you are new to injectables, you're new to aesthetics, this is a great way to get started. Um, they slide in so easily. And, uh, you know, again, we're just subdermal, we're just right underneath the skin. There's really no trick to it other than, you know, inserting that, that thread and just pushing it all the way in, making sure that the thread is dislodged and then pulling them out. Um, I think what might, might be a harder thing is really um, facial assessment and, and learning the anatomy and learning what is aesthetically pleasing, what does this patient need? But as far as inserting the threads, easy. E any, anyone who's in aesthetics can do it. Excellent. Which brings up a really good point with the turnover that we have in the industry right now mm -hmm. and the difficult it is finding help these days, yeah. Yeah. being able to provide that level of support um, for the newer injectors to build that confidence and to really get some skills under them it's a great way with the mono and screw threads. I agree. We're seeing a lot of um, of professional uh, healthcare providers leaving their industry that they're in and jumping into aesthetics. And you know, just because you even you know you draw blood or you start IVs, it's it's a little bit different. And so this is a, a great way to figure out the right plane to be in. And again, very easy to insert. Well, and I like the uh, observation you made in the video of using the mono and screw threads to help create that mesh and a good solid foundation before you use the lifting threads with the cogs. Yeah, I, I think that that is huge. I think that, you know, especially when people are starting out, they, they really need to see what these smooth threads can do. And typically when you insert these threads, you'll see peak collagen production at about three months. Not that you're not gonna see collagen before that, but you really want to give this time to help strengthen the skin. When I have a better foundation to work with, and then I go and pull back that tissue, reapproximate that tissue, I'm going to get a better outcome. You know, we get really hollow in through this area and hollow back here. And sometimes it's just like pulling a sheet over a skeleton. And mm. we don't want that look. We really want to help to revolumize and retexturize. And when we put these smooth threads in, skin looks glowy and smoother and soft and um, and I just have something better to grab onto. So I really recommend this for a lot of providers. Get your hands on these first, do your smooth threads, and then have them come back a month or two later and go ahead and do the lifting threads once they've, once they've got some collagen that they're working with. Which walks us very nicely into a question from the audience right now. Um, how often would you place smooth threads in the same area? Meaning how long in between sessions? How often would... So for me, as often as I need to, um, <laughs> everyone ages at a different rate. Um, people produce collagen at, at a different rate, you know, uh, postmenopausal, uh, a little bit more mature. I, we're going to produce that collagen a little bit slower. I need, I might need multiple rounds. I typically like to wait and see what your own body will do first. And that's typically that two to three month mark. 
let's see what your body can do. And let's see if we need to add more. Or can we just go ahead and go straight into our lifting threads? So, you know, don't do it too soon. Like I don't want to wait a couple of weeks, but definitely give it a two to three months would be ideal to see that peak collagen production and then reassess, yeah. always reassessing. And I let them know this might be something that they might have to do multiple times in a year. And, and that's okay. And they're okay with that. We're, we're moving more towards that more natural look. And this is why the PDO thread lift and PDO threads are so desirable right now, especially in this day and age, because we're moving away from that blowfish look, that over and you know unnatural look. And this fits into what I do so perfectly because I am about restorative and regenerative, regenerative and let's fix the problem. Let's not you just make you look like somebody else. And so, um, and my patients are okay with that. They're willing to pay for that. They're willing, they're, when you educate them, they are okay. They want to come in. Okay, when do I get to come back? When am I coming back for my under eye threads? And we'll schedule it six months out. We'll do another round of under eye threads. Um, so as often as necessary, depending on- I like on that answer. <laughs> and before we move on to another video, I want to circle back to, um, the observation you made, and I'm losing my train of thought now, I've got another question popping up. Oh, um, okay. Do I need to be certified to do PDO threads? Well, it depends on where, what state you are in and being certified is great for your insurance. I do recommend that everybody receive proper training and get a certificate from say us, say when you come and do a training with us and get your certification. As far as legally, I, you could probably answer that question better than I can. You do have to be a nurse in California, a PA. Um, so every state has different regulations. Uh, just as if you're doing your fillers, you, you go and you get a certification. It's something you have to submit to your insurance company and um, your malpractice. And so mm -hmm. I, I do believe that is a yes. Mm -hmm. It is. Okay. <laughs> it is, yes. Um, with new injectors coming into the market every day or to the aesthetic space, what would be some advice that you would give for them to look at when they're going through different thread companies? Because obviously we're not the only company out there yeah. and everybody's strong in certain areas. What are some of the things that you would give advice to for them on that? How, how much time do we have? <laughs> Okay, guys, so I got into this industry, like I said, about seven years ago with the, with the threads. I've tried every thread on the market, different companies. I think it's really important to know how your threads are made, how are they being stored, how they're being delivered, you know, the integrity of the company, um, that they're not being, you know, manufactured in one country, repackaged in another country, and then stored in, you know, uh, not ideal situations with too much heat, not pre uh, heat controlled um, uh, storage rooms. So uh, look at, do your research on the company and then, you know, are they the manufacturer, the distributor? Are they sent directly to the United States? And then just the reliability, um, you know, you have an insurance policy on yours. Um, customer service is huge. If ever there's a problem, you know, making sure that you get the support that you need. Um, but you know, some of the things I looked for were the strength of the product, the tinsel strength. I, on this, out of all the threads I've ever used, your sculpted threads per se, they are probably the highest tinsel strength on the market for, mm -hmm. for what I've seen. They have, are such heavy lifters. Um, your PDOs, all, all of your threads, I think they're between five and seven USP in their thickness, which is pretty robust, pretty hardy. So I want a thread that's reliable and predictable and I get outcomes with them. And um, so that's just, you know, do your research, look into your companies, make sure you have proper training. It, it's not enough to go into a training and you get maybe an hour lecture and then a half hour of hands-on time. That's not enough time. You need someone who's gonna get in there and really work with you and you really spend the time doing your hands-on. Um, you know, so just make sure that you're not gonna be crowded in you know, a room full of 20. I limit my trainings to four people max. Mm -hmm. You know, and and even that's a lot. I, I would prefer maybe two, uh, two to three, but just be careful about the training because then they send you off and you're on your own and you don't have me holding your hand once I, <laughs> once I leave. <laughs> so it's important that they have good training, good follow up, and that the products are are sound products. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I'm Very sure I'm missing a whole bunch of other things. No, you're not. You you covered you you covered them. <laughs> Um, I want to jump back over to a video here and watch 
some more insertion techniques with the mono in screw threads for everybody. And One of the areas that we have a problem with is that we start to get what's called these waterfalls in the decollete area. So how we can treat that is with these smooth threads, place these smooth threads right underneath her skin. These again are 29 gauge, 38 millimeters. And we want to have this cross hatching effect. Now there's, there's many different ways to insert smooth threads. You could have the starburst, the um, spider web, but really what we want to do is help create some support and volumize this area with the smooth thread. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and go in at a little bit of an angle, just get underneath the skin. It should be fairly comfortable for the patient. When you're in the right plane, it should be very easy to insert. Now these are on needles, so you are going to have multiple pokes. Topical numbing typically works very well. And every once in a while, they might feel a little bit of a, a spicy poke. But if you stay in that superficial uh, plane, you, they should not really feel too much. But again, they will get some bruising going at a little angle. You're in the right plane. You're going to stay superficial and you're just going to slide it in. We want to keep these close together because we want that neocollagenesis. If you're only putting in a couple and you're spacing them out far apart, then you're not going to get the desired effect. You really want to create a support system and a, a mesh underneath of just collagen and that scaffolding effect to help with uh, supporting that area. And these will be absorbed by her body over through a three month period. As it's doing that, we're getting more vascularity. We're uh, increasing the, vol the, the blood flow and increasing that collagen production. Elastin, we're helping to volumize and thicken up this area. Now, if you're going to incorporate any lasers, you want to space them out because we don't we don't necessarily want to do deep lasers at the say, say micro needling RF at the same time because you're going to disrupt those threads. So I like to do all my energy based treatments ahead of time, allow those energy based devices to help prepare the skin, and then I'll come in with my threads. But you want to space them out a couple uh, weeks to a month apart, and if you're in the right plane should go in very easy. Sometimes the other threads will get in your way and you can, you can remove them. All right, so that's the first batch. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cross hatch. Going in at an angle underneath the skin, very superficial. Now how you may remove the threads, go ahead and push them forward, press down, give them all a little turn, and then you're just going to go ahead and remove them all at once. Same here, we're just going to press down to give them a little turn, and then remove them. And she didn't have any bleeding. I can't think of one woman who wouldn't want that treatment. <laughs> That was a good example, but realistically, we want to look at what, what's causing the waterfalls. And it's not just the deficiency and the loss of collagen in that little waterfall area. We're really losing it everywhere. So that's just one little section I would do. I would take my longer threads, the 27 gauge, you know, 60 millimeters. Um, and I, and I, would, I would do the entire decollete. It, you know, we can't be stingy with the threads. We really need to make sure that we're using enough threads. Um, and you know, and again, you can intertwine the, the PCLs and the PLLAs, but I'll look at some of the Instagram posts that people put and they've got one, two, three little threads. <laughs> and, you know, and that's not right. You know, we really want to create um, a, a new network for uh, our tissue and really help to, 
to strengthen it and lift it and volumize it. So you did the hashtag on the cheek. Mm -hmm. You did it on the waterfalls. Mm -hmm. Where else do you use these mono threads on the body with that Abdomen, particular technique? Oh, with that, you know, so the hashtag, it, you think about how the threads work. When, when you're inserting them vertically, horizontally is where you're going to get the tissue contraction. And so they actually contract the opposite of the way that you put them in. So say I wanted to create more of that, that snatch jawline. I'm going to put them all in that starburst because I want to just tighten everything um, coming back this way. Mm -hmm. Where we start to lose support. So say we're losing support in our submentum. I'm going to do a hashtag here to really help to support that submentum and tighten it up in, in more of a, just more mesh. Uh, where we have hollowing or we need to build things up. Um, you know, and then we've got the, I really like the spider web for the abdomen because your abdomen grows out this way. So it's stretching in every direction it can stretch. So that spider web really helps to get everything contracted, you know, holistically, globally. Um, and you can do that on the buttocks as well. On the buttocks, we could just do a circular and just insert to help kind of accentuate the, the, the little peak area that we want to accentuate. So you know, it, it, the differences are subtle. I, I just want you to get the idea of get the threads in there, get them in there, put enough of them in there and, and just stimulate that collagen. Don't get hung up on all the different sizes and the different, you know, there's a bunch of different vectors that you can use and they're all going to do a great job, but just get your hands on them, start using them, start inserting them. I find that the shorter ones will be easier for you to use in the beginning mm -hmm. until, and then when you get more advanced and you can start using those longer, and longer ones and be able to traverse the area. Sure. So we've got two really uh, on point questions here. Have you ever hit the thread with a needle while cross hatching to cause it to break the thread? No, <laughs> I've mm -hmm. never broken a thread. I, I bump into other needles and I just push around it, just move around it. <laughs> if they're in my way, and, and you guys, you don't have to keep those threads in there when you're inserting them. You can put one in at a time. I like to keep them all in so that I can see where I've been because I'll lose track very easily. But then there comes a point when I have so many threads in there that it is difficult because now I'm just bumping, bumping into a bunch of different needles. So maybe I'll do a section, pull that section out and then do another section. Uh, but I've never had an issue with disrupting another thread by inserting yeah. another thread. Excellent. And how do you choose when to use a mono thread compared to a multi-thread? Oh my gosh. Can I just <laughs> tell you? Okay. I did not pay anybody to ask that question, by the way. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Can you tell my excitement? I, I, I love, love, love those multi-specialty threads. Um, the the, the multi-specialty threads, there are eight threads folded in half, so you get 16, basically. Um, I fub that up a lot, quite a bit. But um, those are just so robust. It's almost as if you are kind of mimicking what you would with some filler. So if you have a great deal of deficiency here, and you've got big cheeks, it's all lifted, but you just have a deficiency here, I'll throw quite a few of those multi-specialty threads into the nasolabial folds or wherever I have a lot of deficiency. And I don't want to do a bunch of pokes. Because with the multi-specialty thread, the under eye or the eye threads and the lip threads, they all come on a blunt tip cannula. So I can make one little entry point and insert a bunch of different threads through that one little entry point. So the preauricular area, if you know, we start to get really hollow back here, I can make one entry point and put my multi-specialty threads in there and they just kind of broom open. They, those 16 threads just kind of blossom and you really help to restore that volume and get a little bit of ump. If someone has very thin, thin, crepey skin, I'm gonna just use a series of mono threads. I'm gonna build up their tissue. When they have thicker tissue, I might upgrade them to the screw threads or the twist threads. Um, and then, you know, for those who have a little bit more room, I can have a little blanket that can cover my multi-specialty threads. I'll use my multi-specialty threads. But as far as building volume all day long, especially up here, if we start to, you know, this is a dangerous area for filler. And if you're nervous about putting fillers in there, this throw in a bunch of those multi-specialty threads. They work great. Mm -hmm. Oh, this jowling area right here, the pre the, the pre hollow pre gel uh, sulcus, uh, pre gel sulcus, right in through here really helps to build that up. And then you're not putting in a bunch of filler and kind of making them look like a moon face. We're restoring what they've lost. Absolutely. And one of the threads that we have not spoken about, we won't spend too much time on them tonight because we could do a whole webinar on yeah. just this, but our HA linked PDO or PCL threads. Yes. I, 
we've had injectors calling nonstop saying we're, we're seeing results before yeah. people are even leaving the office. Yeah. So not too long ago, I myself went and got some put in my forehead and <laughs> I could not believe it. They're my own darn threads and I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah, th that, that's a yeah. game changer right there because you're combining the beauty of hyaluronic acid, which is a support system for our collagen, right? It really helps to support everything. So now you, you couple that with its healing properties, its anti-inflammatory effects. And then, you know, so people are recovering much faster. We have less inflammation. We have a little bit more volume now because of the hyaluronic acid that's in there. I, I think it's great. I think it's a, it's a game changer, when you, especially when you combine it with, an, with our PCLs, which is just mm -hmm. unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, we'll do a whole other section just on that. <laughs> we absolutely will. We sure will. I've got just a few more questions I want to kind of pepper in here from the audience. Um, we answered the multi-thread. What is the longest thread and the shortest thread? And I'll answer that one. When it comes to the monos, we actually have 100 millimeter, 18 gauge um, mono threads. So those can be used in the thighs, the buttocks, the ab abdomen. Um, they're pretty long, <laughs> pretty long. They're serious threads. Yes. And then we've got, um, I believe there is the shortest, which would be probably a 26, 28, maybe. They're teeny tiny, yeah. teeny, teeny tiny. So we've got all kinds of different options for you to choose from. All right, let's dive back in and watch some of videos with the tear trough okay. using the eye threads. Okay, so we have applied topical numbing to our patient here. We're gonna go ahead and leave the numbing on her decollete because we're gonna save that for last. I've already measured to see where I want my smooth thread on a blunt cannula to enter. I went ahead and I numbed with a little Lido and Epi and you can use bicarb to take some of that sting away. I have a 21 gauge needle now that I'm gonna to use to make my port. What I'm using underneath the eyes are a 29 gauge 38 millimeter thread. It's a smooth thread. It's 29 gauge 38 millimeters. So I don't know if you can see that, but it's very, very thin and it's short. So we're gonna go ahead and insert that into her tear trough. You can also use threads that are on a cannula that are twisted, which gives a little bit more volume. Here we go. We're just going to be right underneath that skin. Super easy to insert. I like to put at least five to 10 in the tear trough. These will absorb over time. Her body will break it down. And while it's doing that, it's creating fibrosis and new collagen and elastin, helping to firm up that skin. So this is great anywhere where you're going to have crepey skin, where we have a little bit of volume loss. We're not really replacing volume. What we're doing is really helping to thicken and tighten up that skin. It should be right underneath the skin, just so subdermal, just right underneath the dermis. You can also be a little bit in the dermis, just not intradermal. Okay, that's two threads already. So the point of having this on a blunt tip cannula, you have one entry point, so you're not having to poke multiple needles into her skin and increase the risk of bruising. So with one entry point, with the blunt tip cannula for the under eye threads, I'm able to put many threads in and help build up that area and tighten up that collagen. These will absorb in about three months or so, but the lasting effect can last even longer. All these threads, the lasting effect, depending on their body, depending on the types of threads you're using, you can have the results last for up to two years. Uh, but your body does start to break them down and we start to see the peak collagen production at about six weeks to three months. And this is something that's not one and done. You wanna to continue to do these treatments to help build up that collagen. So I have created my port with my 21 gauge needle. I've numbed it with 1% Lido and Epi. I'm gonna go ahead and take my 29 gauge 38 millimeter smooth thread. It's on a blunt tip cannula, so I'm able to go ahead and insert as many threads as I want through one little port. And we're just gonna be subdermal, just right below the dermis just to help with that neocollagenesis, we're creating um, 
more collagen, we're creating more elastin. We're helping to thicken up and tighten up that skin. Okay, just pull the skin taut. Very, very easy to insert. Your patient's comfortable. I'm pressing down, I'm turning 360 degrees just to help get the thread off of the cannula. So you can see how quick this procedure is and basically painless for the most part. All right, just right underneath the skin right there, right into the tear trough. Go ahead and make sure the cottonelle is already pushed forward, press down, turn to help it engage and get it off the cannula. And there you go. The body's gonna absorb this over time. It's gonna get better and better. It's not one and done. It's something that you wanna to continue to do to based on how the patient's needs. You can also use smooth threads that are twisted that provide a little bit more volume in the under eye area. We can also make an entry point out here on the lateral campus and go ahead and make a port and we can stream these threads in this direction as well. We, with one or two entry points, we can fill in the entire area where she has some volume loss in the tear trough area. It'll stimulate collagen over time and this is something that she can continue to do to help build up that area. We also have the twisted threads that will also create more volume in this area. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here, Rio. Yes. <laughs> the eye threads are by far some of the most popular threads that we have in our lineup. And mm -hmm. truly, truly, it's like taking a little magic eraser to the eye area and getting rid of those fine lines and wrinkles, um, even, even in the crow's feet. So tell us more about why you love these threads. I love these threads for many reasons. So not everyone is a good candidate for filler under the eyes. And, and it takes a skill to really do um, under eye filler correctly and not have problems later. And sometimes people don't see the problems till way later. Um, if you have herniated fat pads or you have lymphatic drainage issues or you just have a lot of allergies and just holding fluids there. So, you know, she would have been great for the uh, PCLs as well, the PCLHA combined with my eye threads. Um, but we're able to get rid of crepiness. We're able to thicken up that tissue. We're able to help restore that volume loss in the um, orbital rim area. So it's just, it, it's a game changer because we don't have to do a bunch of pokes. We're, we're not, she didn't have any bruising at all. It doesn't take hardly any time at all. I have young girls coming in and doing this every six months just for prevention and for maintenance. Um, so we're just not running into the risks that we're going to run into with some of the other procedures that you would do to correct the under eyes. Um, what about some of the safety issues, possibly hitting a nerve or a vessel? We've got a question in the audience about that. No, I mean, if you're completely negligent and don't know your place, we're really, really just going right underneath that skin. You feel a little bit of a pop. You feel a little bit of a release when you know that you're in the right plane and you're just, it just slides in so easily. You would have to dig in and go much deeper into that nerve to get that nerve. I need to need a much bigger thread to do any type of a nerve damage. Mm -hmm. um, so I have never had any issues with it, with hitting a nerve um, uh, or having any problems with the under eyes really, because again, having that blunt tip, you're making one little entry point and you're just kind of going through the very soft tissue. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What about the depth when you are using the um, multi-threads in the jaw line? So you do want to get, as well. you want to get a little, with those multi-specialty threads, you do want to get a little bit deeper. You want to be in maybe that mid sub Q. If they're very, very thin, maybe a little bit deeper, but you want to be in the butter um, because you do want it to be buried a little bit. You just, you don't definitely don't want it very superficial. So you're going to have to assess your patient's tissue and see how thick or thin they are, but you wanna be in that, you just a little bit deeper, a little bit more in that butter. Okay, and if the skin is not taut under the eye, would you recommend RF first and then smooth threads? So if in my sequence that I do, it's always gonna be my energy-based devices first and really help to strengthen up the skin that way, correct some color, and again, it takes time to see that collagen production. And then I'll go ahead and I'll do my threads. The very last thing I'm gonna do would be the filler. So energy-based devices, anywhere within that period, usually a couple of weeks before you do threads, you could do your neuromodulators and then place your threads. Excellent. I, I just don't wanna do the, the energy-based after. Yeah. Yep. Can you speak briefly about the formation of scar tissue from the threads? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so 
anytime we're stimulating collagen, we're stimulating collagen one and three. Initially, we get that, that um, fibrotic scar type tissue, but it's nothing like what you would see with surgeries or injuries. Then it converts to that softer, more natural collagen. So initially you get in there, you're stimulating that wound healing response. We get that fibrous collagen production that starts to dissipate. And then you get the softer collagen production. So they're really, it's not scar tissue. When people say, oh, we're scarring your, you know, it's not, it's nothing like that. I've had people come to me for years on a yearly basis for threads. And I'm not running into anything that seems you know, like scar tissue. I do feel that their collagen production, I do feel mm -hmm. that they have thicker skin. I do feel that um, definitely that, that the threads did something, but it's not scar tissue like you would think of when you create a ropey scar. Sure, excellent response. Thank you, Real. In regards to the quickness of which the eye treatment seems to take place, <laughs> I mean, it seems to be a, a, yeah. a pretty fast procedure to turn over a room. Talk about the ROI for some of these procedures. Okay, so that's that's a good point. And I was actually going slow for the sake of the video. <laughs> um, and I didn't have an assistant and you can see my, I, I didn't have everything uncapped already. So it does go fairly quickly. And that's why the ROI is so beautiful. You're not spending a whole lot of time in that room, taking up that room. We aren't really having to have them wait to numb because we'll do an injection point right away that takes no time at all. It's just a tiny bit of light out with Epi. And then I base my pricing on outcome. I, I'm not a fan of per thread. Um, you know, I, I, I base most of my treatments on an outcome. So for an outcome for the eyes, say someone was getting filler, they probably need two syringes of filler, one on each side. And they're, you know, you're charging them anywhere from 1200 to 1600, depending on what, you know, you're getting your, your filler for. Um, and, and so I'm going to take what it costs me. Basically, I've already got in my mind what I think an average eye treatment is going to be. And I typically like about 10 threads per side. So I evaluate my costs and then I double or triple it. They're going to pay for an outcome. And I'm, I'm basing it based on, I don't want my hands uh, tied. I don't want to be handcuffed. I want to use as many as I need to and whatever combination I want. So I might want to use a PCL in there as well, or a PLLA with the PDOs. And, you know, maybe I'll use 10 or 15 per side. And I want to price it that way and have a flat eye outcome. Some people get less, some people get more, and I don't have a problem with that. So anywhere from 1,000, 1,200, 14, depends on the area and what people are willing to pay. But again, it's a very quick procedure and there's not a lot of costs other than, than the thread. Um, that, that's how I do it. Some people will charge by bag and some people will charge by, by time. I really am, um, I'm outcomes driven and I stand by my work. And so they're paying for my expertise and they're paying for the outcome that I'm expecting them to get. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And on that note, while they're called eye threads, they're basically just a blunt tip cannula, yeah. which is great to be used in the eye area, but they yeah. can be used in Anywhere. so many other treatment areas as well. Before Anywhere. we had our lip threads, injectors yeah. were using the eye threads on yep. the lips. I still so, do because mm -hmm. they're shorter and I'm mm -hmm. able to maybe accentuate the cupid's bow a little bit more, filtering column, you know, and our, our lip threads also on a blank tip cannula, they're just a little bit longer. And so you can use them anywhere. Get creative. Don't be put in a box and be limited because really it's, you, it's up to your imagination what you can do with these things. There's, there's very little risk we're stimulating collagen, we're thickening up that skin, we're restoring what we've lost. So don't limit yourself. You can use whatever thread anywhere you want, as long as you're being smart about the depth and what, what am I trying to do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one more question from the audience here. When combining threads and filler, which do you use first and how much time in between? So I, you know, everyone again is gonna do this differently and I have people doing it the same day. I, I'm a purist at heart. I, I am starting to change my ways a little bit because people want their outcomes and they run it right away. So say they have a wedding to go to and we don't have time to wait. I, I would consider doing everything in one treatment. Now where before I wanted to wait a month, I really wanted your body to stimulate that collagen and see what you really needed. Cause maybe you didn't need as much filler. You maybe needed the filler somewhere else. So, you know, I'm going to base it on a patient by patient. Typically, I like to wait a month because I want 
the swelling to go down. I want, you know, the collagen to start kicking in. I want the healing process to begin. If I can wait a little bit longer to see what my threads were able to do, um, then that would be ideal. But if we're doing, talking about two completely different areas, you know, if I'm doing lips and I'm not doing threads in the lips and maybe I'm doing threads on the face, I'll do lips, you know, the same time. Or, um, you know, if I am working on the integrity of the superficial tissue with the threads, and maybe they need deep periosteal injections with, um, with filler, I could do that the same day. So it depends on what areas are you treating. Typically, I don't like to add injury to injury. That's kind of my mm. rule of thumb. Mm. Excellent. Good, good, good. I love these questions. But, but don't be limited, guys. I mean, as long as you're being safe and you're thinking about what you're trying to accomplish. Perfect. So we talked about the eye threads being used on the lips, and we do have time to show a video um, for that lip flip, flip, which everybody loves. So if we can get that video up and running, we should be able to watch that and see Rio in action again. <laughs> for last, a 26 gauge, 50 millimeter blunt lip thread. So this we can help evert the lip, give it a little bit of a lip flip. Also fill in some of that volume loss, a little bit of collagen production, help tighten up this whole upper lip area. Okay. Okay, this is a 26 gauge, 50 millimeter thread. I'm gonna go ahead and place it in my entry point, if I can find it. Pull that skin taut. We're just going to go into the vermilion border. We want to be subdermal, just very, very superficial. You okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, turn away. So now I'm going to use a 26 gauge 50 millimeter thread to insert into the vermilion border to the belly of her lip and, and above her lip as well. And that's just going to help create a little bit more collagen production, help to elevate that lip a little bit and give it a little bit more hydration. I've made a, um, I've numbed the area with 1% Lido and Epi using my 21 gauge needle here to go ahead and make my port. And do you feel that? No, I do not. Okay, then I'm just gonna go ahead and go right into the skin. Leave that there for a second. Okay, so this is your 26 gauge, 50 millimeter lip thread, and it is on a blunt tip. So I can put multiple threads through one entry point. Okay. We want to stay just subdermal or almost dermal, very superficial. Let's try to find our little entry point here. Pull that skin top, we're gonna to be superficial. Okay, I'm gonna press, give it a little turn, and remove. And we're just helping to restore some of the collagen loss and tighten up the upper lip and the vermilion border and the belly of the lip. There we go, a little bit of definition here. We go right in through here. All right, here we go, a 26 gauge, 50 millimeter thread. We're going to help to restore volume loss and tighten up the skin and the lip, above the lip. Twenty-six gauge, 50 millimeter thread. It's on a blunt tip. I just made an entry point with my port, and we're gonna stay superficial and go right into the vermilion border, keep that skin pulled taut. We just wanna be subdermal, and it should go in very easy if you're in the right plane, and it should be very comfortable for the patient. Okay, I'm gonna give it a little press and a twist and remove it, and there we go. And we're helping to evert that upper lip, produce collagen, help define that vermilion border, and we can also put some threads into the belly of her lip. So that was just a short demo. 
do you want to talk a little bit more about the process itself and, and why you prefer to do the lip threads versus maybe some other treatment modality in that area? So, you know, this is not everyone's a good candidate for filler in the lip, especially when we start to get a really long ergotory view, you know, this starts to get really long. Then if we're putting filler and sometimes they just end up looking more like a duck or Madge or Marge Simpson, whichever one that is. So, <laughs> and some people just don't want that, that the, the filler, they just want to not have, um, they've got that volume loss, they've got that crepiness. So I really like to use it to define that border. We can use the ones that are twisted as well, define that vermilion border, enhance that Cupid's bow without making them look odd, without making them you know, have that duck appearance. Um, and then some people will do toxins around the lip and that helps a little bit, but sometimes you can't get the soup off your spoon. You know, you really are softening those muscles and so people can't, you know, eat properly and sometimes it alters their look. So with the lip threads, we're not altering their look. We're defining their own natural uh, shape. We're restoring that collagen loss, helping to plump them up and just kind of lift it up a little bit. And so again, it's very safe. I, I'm not dealing with any type of vascular occlusions. Um, there's very, there hardly ever any bruising. We're just right in that, you know, that border right there. Um, so it's just, it's easy and patients love it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a theme I keep hearing you say <laughs> over and over again is the monothreads are easy. Yes. They, they're easy. New injectors can do this. Seasoned yeah. injectors can certainly do this and expand their return on investment yeah. greatly um, with their bottom line of profitability just by using the mono and screw threads. Very and, and, you know, not only that, you're giving them a natural look. You're restoring what you, they've lost. And, that, and that's, that's where we're headed now. Let's fix the problem. As you're aging, let's restore what you're losing and mm -hmm. your patients are gonna be happier. And so I recommend getting a training. If you're a brand new injector, get a training just on our, on our mono threads and, and we'll spend time perfecting that. Then have me come back out for an advanced training. And then we'll work with, you know, more of the barbed threads and lifting threads. And then there's, you know, we can just keep going because there's advanced to the advance, <laughs> you know, with all the different vectors and, um, yeah, it is. It's really easy. It's going to get you started. It's going to get your patients, you know, build that relationship with them and have them look good naturally. So we just had a question from the audience. What is a screw thread? So <laughs> a screw or a twist, it's basically a thread, um, on a cannula, but it's wrapped around. Um, so it, you get a little bit more volume, a little bit more oomph. And um, that the model would have been great with the with that thread as well if we had just put in um, a few of those screws. There's also a double screw. You can use these in scars. You can use them for acne scars, C-section scars, anywhere where you have any type of a scar where you need to pop it up a little bit. Because it's wrapped around the needle, it just gives it a little bit more structure um, and gives you more of that 3D type collagen production. And you mentioned scars, but also cellulite. Some of the yes. triple screws and double screws in multi-threads yeah. people have used to treat cellulite very successfully. I, I'm going to, I, you know, I don't work a whole lot on body parts are very hard to establish expectations, make sure people are realistic and, and it just really managing the outcomes. And when I've done threads on the legs, just for skin tightening, you know, we get the crepey knees, those saggy knees. I can't tell you the improvement they get in the cellulite just from regular smooth threads, mm -hmm. just building up that collagen. They, they get smooth, they get rid of the dimpling and they, it just looks so much better. So I know if that is your market and you're working with cellulite, I think it's a great alternative to some of the other things that are out there that I have tried and have been very disappointed in the outcomes and based on the price and then just the downtime with some of the problems that they encounter with some of the other treatments. So again, again, there's a lot of versatility with, uh, with the threads. It's you're limiting yourself with your imagination. And, you know, you, you bring up downtime with some of the other treatment modalities and with the mono and screw threads, from my own personal experience, there's no downtime. There's, yeah. there, there's no downtime and yeah. the complications and side effects or potential for complications and side effects is slim to none Minimal. when it comes to yeah. these little, little guys. Um, yeah. We did have a question that it's a little off top, but I will bring this up because I think it is valid. Um, one of the audience members says, after lifting threads, so the, the heavier barbed threads, do you mm -hmm. tell patients to avoid sleeping on their side? Well, I tell them they need to sleep on their back for the rest of their lives. 
Okay, done and done. So, you know, anytime we're sleeping on our side or on our face, which I'm a habit of, um, you're going to get the waterfalls. You're going to, you're going to interfere with the, you know, the circulation. But when you put the threads in, you do have some swelling and you do have some healing uh, time that is required. So yes, please sleep on your back. So you're not putting pressure on the areas that might have a little bit of swelling. We're trying to get those threads to adhere to your tissue. So we need that circulation. We need the lymphatic drainage. We need the healing process. So um, I have a whole list of don'ts. Uh, to do once the, they've had any type of a thread. And when, when you come to one of my trainings, I'll give you all the little tips that I had to learn the hard way on my own. And there was no book on how to, you know, have and how to deal with the adverse reactions, but I know how to avoid them. And I reiterate it to my patients over and over again until I'm a broken record and they have nightmares of me in their head. Don't do this, don't do that. Don't, no downward dog yoga, don't go jog, you know. And, but if they adhere to this, especially the dental work, you know. So when you have the training, we'll go through all of that and you'll learn all my little tricks of, you know, that I had to learn the hard way. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Um, last question, it looks like we're running out a little bit of time here. Can the amount of a lift from a single screw thread be manipulated as it is inserted? It's a great question. I know the answer, but it's a very smart oh, question. Well, why don't you, Stacy? why don't you have a jab at it, my friend? No, it can't be. So I think what the, the question is asking is, can the screw thread be similar to um, a, a lifting thread? And no, it, no, the screw threads do not have any barbs. They create no. volume. They no. do not, um, are not manipulated to no. be lifting threads. Yeah, yeah. no, no. Great question, all. Hank. Good answer. All right. So to summarize, is it fair to say mono and screw threads are easy to insert, very safe, quick, easy procedure, yeah. high in ROI for you guys as accounts out there and injectors. Um, what else would you take away from this, Rio? Um, gosh, get training <laughs> and you know, this needs to be incorporated into everybody's practice. It, it's easy enough to do. It's easy enough to get started. It's a great complement to everything that you're already doing. We're moving in that direction of more restorative and natural. Um, but don't be afraid of them. And, and this is one of the, the least invasive or the least complicated things you might be doing in your practice. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I encourage you to just use them. I, you know, I, I, in the beginning, everyone came in and they just wanted lifting, lifting, lifting. But I find that if we really spend the time and put in those monos and smooths, you're going to get a better outcome, a longer lasting outcome. So don't forget about those monos and screws. Yes, your patients want that immediate lift, but educate them and, and really start incorporating them into your treatments. Excellent. Very, very good. So for anybody who wants a little bit more information, we actually have a six page how to guide that walks you through some insertion techniques some patterns, um, walks you through a lot of the tips and tricks that Rio has shared with us this evening, but it's a great PDF that we can get to you. So just feel free to email us at sales. So S A L E um, mm -hmm. at laysoncray.com. And we can get that to you. Of course, your local sales partner in the field out there will have access to this document as well. So we want to share the amazing um, opportunity that mono and screw threads can be um, bring to your practice. And last but not least, before we all say goodbye for the evening, we have three random winners of our thread giveaway. So the following people were chosen at random to receive a $500 credit to their purchase of threads. We've got Charlotte Bell, Romeo Bernal, and Alicia Lawson. So we will be contacting you shortly to make sure that you can redeem that. And if you have any additional questions, feel free to always reach out to us. We really pride ourselves on having the support, not just for you on a day-to-day -day basis, but also with the training aspect. So we are here and we look forward to continuing to help you guys grow in your practice. Thank you so much, Rio. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Great Thanks job. Thanks for joining guys. Thanks. Take care. Bye -bye. Good luck out there. Bye-bye. <laughs>